What's up everyone? Today's video, it's gonna clarify a ton of stuff that's on your mind. Mustafa Asal, he is an awesome player, an awesome athlete, but as you know, he has a ton of controversy surrounding him. So what I aim to do in this video is break out his movement. Get ready guys, let's get into this. First things first, I wanna put some context into this discussion and I want to be clear that this is a controversial topic and some of us have differing opinions, but please be respectful when you are communicating about it. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I don't, I aim for the comments to not get heated and disrespectful. Share your opinion, share your perspective, but please do it with respect. And when someone else's perspective and opinion differs, let's have a respectful conversation about it. The next point, and this is point number three, is that anything that I'm sharing and your opinions with respect are only hypotheses. We do not know what Mustafa Sal is actually doing. We can have a sense of what we think he's doing, but no one knows unless we have that conversation with him and he tells us up front. So again, this is only a hypothesis. I personally believe that he deliberately does use his body to give him an advantage. I feel that he's young because there are other players who used to do this a lot more. Mohamed Shrabagi used to do this a lot more. Gregory Gaultier used to do this a lot. And as they grew up and they matured a little bit, they stopped. They didn't completely stop. They use it in certain situations because there are certain situations when someone hits a very, very loose ball where you are allowed to take your space and move back to the tee. But there's a subtle difference between taking your space and deliberately moving into your opponent's line. But my point being that guys like Mohamed Sharbagi and Gregory Goltier and some others, over time as they matured, actually seized that activity. And I think in time, Mustafa Sal will probably realize that he doesn't need to use his body the way he does right now in not just where it's legit and where he's, where he's in the right position and should or could use it, but in places, basically in every shot, he's doing something subtle as soon as the opportunity presents itself. But I'm gonna talk more about that in a minute. What I think we need to do, and this is point number five, is that because he is so talented and because he is young, I feel that if we can provide positive encouragement more about his gameplay, as opposed to putting down the negative side of it, it's gonna create more energy and momentum in favor of whatever we promote. So the idea is, if we're always talking negatively about his movement and we're talking negatively about his attitude, well, he's gonna feed off of that negativity because he's getting attention. If, however, we focus on the positive side of it and we encourage the awesome gameplay and the tactics and the shot making and the power and the agility and the speed and the athleticism, well, then maybe he'll focus on playing that style of game. I also feel that a mentor, someone like Rami Ashour, for example, would be phenomenal in helping us all bloom into a very, very fair player. And speaking of Rami, I'm gonna show you a couple of comparative movements near the end of this video. And then the last thing I wanted to point out, and this is also based on some of the comments that you guys have shared in the past through some other videos of mine, is that some change in squash may not necessarily be a bad thing. Now, historically squash has been a gentleman's game, but bringing about some controversy, personally, I don't, necessarily like Mustafa Sal's movement style the most. That's my personal opinion. But some of that controversy that does arise because of his movement, because of his antics, his celebrations and things like that, that could potentially create a bit of a buzz about around the game and it could help promote the game. It could also go the other way, but it could help promote the game. So something for us to be aware of. All right, enough chatting. Let's get into some of the highlights first clip coming up here let's check it out forgive the interruption folks i completely missed a couple of clips that i really want to put in after already creating the video so i'm just putting this little reminder in here for you guys to check out the very end of the video to see two more very very important clips all right continue watching the rest of it and i'll catch you at the end of it so let's i'm going to break this down piece by piece Farag hits the cross-court volley. Asal, nice, nice, strong, gets across that volley, hits that ball, gets across the tee, rather. And what he does is, see, Ali Farag is on the left, 
And what Assault could do is because Farag is going to come in front of him, Assault could just push back to the T. But what Assault does, and this could be like a strategic thing other than taking coming into the opponent's line. See, look, Farag's line is here, and Assault is moving a little bit forward as well when he's coming back to the T. And that little bump right there completely throws off Farag's movement and his momentum and it becomes almost impossible to hit that ball and all of you guys play and you know that when there's even the slightest contact it throws off the balance and it's very very hard to execute an effective shot so I wanted to share that as the first view into Mustafa Sal's movement where you'll notice that when he especially it's mostly in the midcourt when he's in that midcourt slightly behind the uh, short line, slightly in front of the short line. He always tends to move in some diagonal angle based on where his opponent is in order to block their path just a little bit. Sometimes it's very blatant, and I'm going to show you that in a minute as well. So you can see that, how he moved back into Farag's line. So let's check out another one. So in this clip, Asal hits the straight ball, and then you're going to watch from here. He comes... He could go back over here where my arrow is pointed, just either straight back or even back a little bit to give Asal the line to move from in front. But he goes right back there. And this time, because Asal's length is a little bit higher, Farag does decide to go from behind. So you see Asal moves diagonally into the front, Farag goes back. But the challenge with this is that if you are always coming behind, you are never getting that volley opportunity. It's a losing position. You cannot consistently move behind your opponent. So you need to be able to push in front of them. But if your opponent is hitting, so this is Asal and this is Farag, Asal hits and he moves this way back to the tee. Well, now he's in Farag's line to the ball. However, if Asal moves across, Farag can go in front and then he can actually get on the ball. And you're gonna see that a lot of players, Farag included, go across so the other person can go from in front and actually get the line to the ball. So let's check out one more clip here. So in this case, this is a very blatant example. So Asal does force a loose ball, so he has the right to take his space. Farag is stuck beside him. And now watch this. So watch as Asal hits this straight volley drive, he moves diagonally forward. Now these are the ones that frustrate me personally because He's already up on the tee, okay? He can hit this ball and just move straight across to the tee and he's still in the tee position that he would naturally play with. And then Farah can move from in front of him. But now, watch what he does. Watch this right foot, the white shoe. It continues to go forward. And then he also steps forward sideways into Farag's line. And now Farag has no way to go anywhere. And I make this point because this is not a natural tee position. In a match, you will never see Asal literally standing on the physical tee. He's always standing behind the tee, especially when the game's being played in the mid and back court. So this is just a blatant example to show you what he's doing. And I'm gonna show you that one more time so you can watch it from the start. So he sets up, he knows where Farag is, he widens the stance, watch that right foot, the white shoe, and look how that right shoe comes forward and then his entire body leans forward into this unnatural T position to block Farag out. And then at the Farag goes and gets the ball, there's a ton of contact, throws a balance off, and this was in this rally, you can't see it here, but Farag is just staring at us all because he's like, what the heck are you doing? Because that is unnatural movement and unnecessary, truthfully. Now let's check this out. Here's where I'm gonna show you that Asal is not always at fault. Now, in this situation, one is a little bit close up, the one's a bit further, and the clip on the right, you're gonna get it zoomed in shortly. He's hitting from a very similar position with his front foot. He's hitting the same shot, it's a straight drop. He's under more pressure, like he's more stretched out in the clip on the left, he's not stretched out in the clip on the right. But what you'll see here are two things. So one is Asal's clearance, and one is Farag's line to the ball. So same shot is being played, the straight drop, and you're gonna see over here, there it zooms in. See, 
he's a little bit to the right of the service box and he's a bit to the right of the service box marginally more to the right in the clip on the left and he's stretched out a bit more so his movement his push out is going to be as far or as strong because he's stretched out more it takes a lot more force to push out from a deep lunge versus a shallower lunge and he's a little bit closer to the wall in the clip on the left so i'm not expecting him to move as far back uh, in the clip on the left and that's essentially what we see so you see over here Asal moves back and he gets to just be behind or beside the service box edge and then the clip on the right where he wasn't as close to the sidewall and he wasn't under as much pressure he gets you know a good foot foot or so to the side of the service box the other thing is Farag's line so over here you see Farag's left foot is right beside the service box over here Farag's left foot is a foot to the right of the service box so this is where it isn't always clear cut, right? There might be times where Asal's movement is deliberate, like the example I showed you. And then there are times like this where the line of the opponent and the way the player moves out based on the pressure they're under, based on the shot that they play, based on their strength, based on uh, all of that kind of stuff, it all has an impact. So I wanted to show you this because it clearly shows that you know there are many, many factors at play and it isn't always malicious. So now I want to show you a cool comparison here. So Mustafa Asal and Ali Farag uh, are both playing the same shot in this example. And it's this straight volley drive. And what you're going to see is the same thing I de demonstrated before. So Asal hits and he pushes back into Farag's line. And you're going to notice Farag does something very different. So Farag, notice he moves back and across so that Asal can actually go through and play his shot. Notice how far I've moved there. So I'm going to play this again for you guys. So check this out. Asal hits. We're going to focus on him first. He hits and moves diagonally back to the T while his body's leaning forward to contact with Farag. And now let's quickly watch Farag. Farag hits and watch he moves back giving us all the line and then after moving back Farag moves forward to step up onto the tee that's clean movement giving your opponent a path to the ball and that makes for free flowing squash it's actually in your favor to do that because you're now making your opponent do a ton of work by making Asal in, the, in this example do the diagonal and then Farah can get on the next ball when Asal is under pressure in the back so it can actually be in your favor to get out of the way let your opponent go and play the ball so now let's move on from here to the next clip now this clip I found really really interesting because he's playing on the forehand side in both examples but what you're gonna see is that there's some st distinct similarities between his movement in the two videos and then there are distinct differences. So what I want you guys to think about are the similarities. I'm going to share the differences right now. So let's check this out. The clip on the left, Asal is playing a high forehand volley drive. The clip on the right, he's playing a drop shot. So watch this. Just like the example of the backhand I showed you guys earlier, in this one, he plays the high forehand straight volley drive. And then look at his movement, straight diagonally back into Farag's line and there see that left leg literally is extended forward to get into Farag's way and then he moves his body there Farag trips over the leg and then he's off balance now if you look at the clip on the right watch him he plays the drop shot and then look his momentum goes to the right side which is in the same direction as the drop shot so the part that like this blows my mind because players hit the ball and then they push back to the T, right? Why Farag being the strong guy that he is, why is he hitting the forehand and then leaning forward towards the right wall? Well, it's to get into Ali Farag's line of movement. So this is pretty annoying. The, those are the differences. He hits the forehand and then pushes back on the volley to get back to the T, back and actually diagonally towards Ali Farag's line. In the clip on the right, he hits the forehand and then leans forward to get into Ali Farag's line. So he's very aware of where his opponent is and he's deliberately moving into the opponent's line to get in the way. Now, 
personally, in my opinion, there are no ifs, ands, or buts when it comes to this. Like this example is so evident because you see other players, they hit the forehand drop and they'll either stand on it or they'll hit the forehand drop and push back. Asal is hitting the forehand drop and leaning forward, drifting with his shot to block Ali Farag's line. That to me is not cool. Um, I'm, so, I'm getting a little heated because I find this very frustrating because it's very frustrating to play players that actually do this. So, you know, I'm hoping that this brings light to the situation. Truthfully, this is like credit to Mustafa Asal because this is a very difficult skill. His awareness of, it, of his opponent on court is phenomenal to be able to make these subtle movements in order to get in their way. What I'm hoping is that he can take the time and the energy and the effort and the awareness and the skill that he has and channel it in a positive way because he will be unstoppable if he does that. He has all of the tools. He needs to just apply it all in a positive way and focus on the actual squash and not on this stuff. My opinion, you may disagree, and please share a comment if you do. Let's have a respectful discussion about it. And I wanted to show you guys one more example, just from another player, which I thought you guys might enjoy. Here's Rami. So this is the same example I showed you on the left of Asal, where he hits and moves diagonally forward into Ali Farag's line, and then watch Rami. And it's so cool because Farag is playing Rami in the clip on the right, and Farag is playing Asal on the clip on the left and watch Rami's movement. You've already seen the clip on the left, so let's focus on the clip on the right. So Rami hits, and then he pushes back and slightly to the right, well, to the right and slightly back, and what does that do? It allows Ali Farag through. And notice Farag has to do all of this tremendous work. Over here in the clip on the left, Farag is still doing tremendous work, but there's all this unnecessary contact. The situation for Asal can actually turn against him because referees when they start seeing this are going to start awarding conduct strokes against him giving his opponent the points for this deliberate blocking so another reason to really ch channel all of this skill and this awareness and this talent into a positive way and now watch this as well Rami Ashur because he simply played his ball and he moved back towards the tee not diagonally forward but just across and even a bit further back to give Ali Farag the line Look how Rami's standing. He's standing like he would naturally with a slight body lean. Look at Asal. He's totally angled to the side because he's deliberately made his body wider to get into Ali Farag's way. So in my opinion, not really cool. Okay, enough of the clips. I just want to have a positive, constructive discussion for a minute. So what can we done about this? Like, what can we do? First thing I want to talk about, philosophy of controllable versus uncontrollable variables. Now, when this come, what I'm talking about here is there are certain things that we can control, such as our preparation, our sleep, our fitness, training, our recovery, our nutrition, our hydration, etc. And then there are uncontrollable factors, the things that our opponent does, the, any slippery conditions on court, the referee's decisions, things along those lines. What we need to do is focus on the controllable factors and focus on creating anchors and being mindful on the court so that when things don't go in our favor or when people do things that are not cool, we don't lose it. So that's high level philosophy that I really, really wanna to try to drive home. Number two, I think that referees have to act decisively immediately and be very firm in what they say and what they do and the actions they take when players start blocking. And maybe referees could watch a video like this to see they probably already know. I mean, I'm not trying to educate referees or, or question anyone's abilities, but sometimes it's tricky to see the nuances unless you've played at that level. It's very hard to see the nuances. The other thing, I mean, for referees, I, I have to give them a shout out because the job of referee is incredibly difficult. See, we're watching this in slow motion. The referees have to see this in real speed they have the pressure of the audience, they have the pressure of the players, they have the fact that this is the player's livelihood, that pressure on their mind, and they have to make the correct decision in a split second. That is not easy. So credit the referees and thank you to the referees for doing such a phenomenal job and doing the best that they possibly can. Now, if the referees do act firmly and swiftly right at the beginning, the first instance of any kind of blocking, conduct warning. The player will not do that again because then they know they were, they're they're going to start losing points right away. So that I think is really, really critical. The third piece is that 
when players hit loose balls, anything in the middle of the court, it makes it very simple for your opponent to take that space. So if you fluff up a loose ball, if your length is loose, the other player has, they have some degree of a right to take some space. Now that doesn't mean making yourself huge at getting into the line of your opponent, but it does mean taking a bit of space and hitting the ball because you've given them a super loose ball. So we have to ensure that we hit our targets and get our length into the back of the court to prevent this sort of behavior. There is something that some players do, which is when they're feeling like they're being blocked a lot deliberately, they get very aggressive. So they deliberately then, the next time they get blocked, they deliberately go and almost tackle the other person to get in their heads that, hey, don't pull this kind of BS on me. I'm gonna go through you if you're gonna do this with me. I'm not condoning that kind of behavior because I think getting that aggressive takes away from the fun and the spirit of the game. Um, at the highest levels, it, it is their livelihood. And as you all know, squash doesn't have a ton of money. So people you know, do things because they're not just playing for fun, they're playing to put food on their tables. So that's a, that's a difficult one. I personally don't like the whole aggressive confrontational sort of thing because it takes away the fun of the game and the love of the game it gets removed, at least for me personally, everyone's different. And the last thing I think is that we need to lead by example. We need to maybe highlight some of the role models and highlight some of the awesome players in the clean games so that people get inspired by that and people enjoy and appreciate that. And then players who do block and who do kind of engage in some of these shady or you know less than desirable activities, maybe they'll realize that, hey, maybe I do want to play cleanly so that people admire me more and people want to watch me play more or there isn't as much controversy and things along those lines so ladies and gentlemen that is my my take on some of Mustafa Saul's sketchy movement as I put it and again I'm not saying this and this video is not a negative critical thing about Mustafa Saul it's something where I want to highlight the facts I want to share my perspective I want to share the differences between how one can move cleanly versus not move cleanly. And then I did want to have a bit of a productive conversation around what we can do to try and minimize this sort of movement. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and share it with any other squash enthusiasts who might enjoy this sort of a discussion. And uh, as always, leave a comment I hope we have a very constructive, positive, respectful discussion on this video, and I will check you guys out in the next one. Take care. So here we are, final two clips that I really want to share with you guys. One of them highlights something that I find funny because I try to take the amusing perspective as opposed to <laughs> getting frustrated. And then the other one actually shows that most of us all can clear exactly how we talked about earlier in the video so check this out same from the same match Ali Farag and Mustafa Sal from the British Open uh, recent one 2021 quarterfinal so this clip here Mustafa Sal hits and then he moves back into Ali Farag's line and clearly Farag is not happy and you're going to get to see this again in a second and then I, I love how Asal plays innocent so check this out it's going to show you from a different angle now so Farag hits and now, if you remember from the previous clip that I shared with you guys, in this exact same position, there was one difference. Instead of Farag being behind Asal, Farag was beside Asal, and he was kind of coming in to take this line to the ball. And what did Asal do? He moved forward, diagonally forward towards the tee to block Farag's line. So let's test you guys. What do you think Asal will do here if he wants to get in Farag's way? He's gonna move back a little bit because now he's getting into Farag's line because Farag is behind him. And let's see, check this out here. I'm gonna go really slowly. So look at Asal's left leg, black shoe. Look how that leg goes back. And notice this time, he's pushing diagonally back into Farag's line instead of in the other clip earlier in this video, you guys can check it out again for reference. He moves directly across and forward to get into Farag's line. So see, he moves back and there's the bump over there with the shoulder and Farag is just like, what the heck are you doing? Very, very frustrating to be honest. But 
I thought I would try to end this on a positive note. So check this out. Asal hits, and now look how he moved out there. He moved directly to the left, exactly like we've been talking about. So let me show you this one again. I'm going to do this frame by frame where we need to. So Asal hits, Farag is beside slash already slightly in front of him. If Asal did what he has generally done, he would have moved diagonally forward into the line and then he would have blocked Ali Farag's movement. In this case, notice his left foot and his body goes directly across to the T. Check it out, right there. And Farag is actually able to move from in front of him. That is how he could be moving all the time. And the previous clip I just showed you is such a potent reminder and indicator of the fact that Mustafa Sal is so aware of where his opponent is. When Ali Farag was in front, he moved back to the T diagonally forward. When Ali Farag is be behind, he moves back to the T <laughs> diagonally backwards. He's deliberately getting into Farag's line. But I want to end with this one because you can see that he does have the ability to completely clear the ball and Ali Farag's path as well. I'm going to leave it on that note. Thank you for viewing and thank you for your support. I'll check you guys out in the next video.